Well, all right, let's talk about Marquise Brown and what I think he means to the Kansas City Chiefs. I think this is a really smart move, kind of by both parties, really. Uh, I remember Juju Smith-Schuster did something similar where he signed a one-year deal with the Chiefs, ended up getting a big contract with the Patriots the following season. It's one of those things where if you don't get the contract you're looking for, why not go to Kansas City, kind of build up your stock, and hopefully get more money the following year? And for Kansas City, why not take these one-year deals and get one year of production from a good player? And who knows, maybe it'll work out really well and they'll end up playing together, you know, uh, he'll resign in Kansas City or something. But for now, let's just talk about what he should bring to Kansas City next season as they are trying to be the first team in NFL history to win three straight Super Bowls. So first, this play, which this is something that, you know, uh, I've kind of defended the Chiefs receiving core a bit this last season. Like, they still have Kelsey, who's really good. They still have Rice, who's really good. But none of those guys are really true outside threats. Like, Marquez Valdez-Scantling was kind of their guy to be that guy. But I wonder if Marquise Brown could do that to some degree. This is a, an example of him being an outside threat threat. Going to be a go route in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, single safety deep. And I'm not saying he can win on these like every single time, but like watch what he's going to do here. Watch as when his play begins, we all know about Brown's speed. He's using his speed to try and get past the uh, corner. The issue is that I wouldn't say it didn't work, just that the corner, you know, he had to turn his back towards the quarterback to make sure he keeps pace with Brown, so can't play the ball. That's still an advantage, but I would say he's still doing a pretty decent job at getting in position. This certainly isn't wide open or anything like that, but Kyler Murray's kind of saying, hey, we're down 37 to 8, so why don't I just throw one down the field and hope something works out? And as you see, Brown is able to adjust to the ball nicely, and he does make that catch right there. Brown is capable of winning on the outside. Like I said, he's not necessarily doing this all the time or constantly, but I fully expect there to be a time or two where Mahomes hits Brown uh, you know, on a deep ball. I really do expect that. But really, going over here, this is kind of how his speed, I would say, more so affects things. And worth mentioning the situation. Uh, so it is kind of a blowout with two minutes left. So to some degree, 49ers just don't want to give up a big play. So that's a factor. But I've seen this in other scenarios too, where it's going to just be a curl route. There is a 49ers player in quarters coverage who is covering Brown. Watch how when it begins, you see that right here. I mean, look at how much that corner is bailing though. I mean, like I said, you know, it is this the situation. I get it, but it feels like it's even more so than what you would do in this given situation. He's very much trying to get deep down the field, partially because he knows Brown is fast and Brown can get by him. So, one Brown instead, you know, stops, he's able to get open, and they're able to get a completion. That's kind of the main way he's able to, I would say, have kind of an impact with his speed. That tends to be how he does it. Now, maybe Kansas City will try to push him down the field more, but the reality is they don't really push the ball down the field that much anymore. A lot of what they do is stuff like this, which I think will be set up due to his speed. I think this is kind of more of what we'll see. I want to go over to something like this, though, and this is what I was really interested in looking at because, you know, for the Chiefs, a lot of times what they want is, and, you know, Andy Reid in general wants his receivers kind of to be greater than the sum of their parts, right? They want to have a scenario where the way they work together and everyone running their routes well can create things that can get, you know, can get guys open. Like something like this, for example, where it's just going to be kind of an underneath route against man coverage with a lot of traffic over the middle. That's the way this play is designed to work. When Brown uh, starts running his route you see him get underneath and like it's not a crazy route or anything it's not like he's doing anything spectacular but this is well executed by the entire Arizona Cardinals offense Josh Dobbs is going to hit uh Brown who has the speed to get the first down to me this is how the Chiefs will want to use his speed and this is usually why Andy Reid likes fast receivers it's usually less about you know oh you know, winning down the field. That's the, what people always think about when they think past receiver. But there's a lot more uh, than that that speed can help out with. And this is one of those things. And you do have to wonder if, if Kelsey and Rice are getting some attention taken off of Brown, Brown can then make stuff like this happen. Also going over here, I just think he's a good route runner. Like I just think sometimes these routes I see him run are really well done. And this play, it's going to be a zone coverage play. And his route is one that can work against zone coverage. Trying to get kind of in a gap in coverage. But what's an important aspect of getting in a gap in coverage well you know the players who are in coverage it's not like a video game where they're always going to stay where they're at if they can kind of tell where you're going they'll move in that direction and kind of cover that up so when this play begins look at what brown's doing he's not giving away what he's running he's not allowing 
any defender to say, oh, he's going to be running over the middle. Let me step in now and try and cover that. The guy I always think about when it comes to this stuff is Julian Edelman was maybe the best I've ever seen at this stem portion of the route is what they call it, right? Because it's a route tree. So the stem of the tree, right? That, that, that first part, not giving away what you're doing is so important. Because then when he cuts, and he cuts so smoothly, you now see this is open. And, you know, for the Kansas City Chiefs, listen, they have guys who can get open in zone already. I, you know, Rice is very good in zone. Kelsey is maybe the best to ever do it when it comes to beating zone coverage. But still, having another guy is always impactful, especially when those other guys might get extra attention. You need someone else to get open. Dobbs this time does not hit Brown, but that was a good, well, roll ran route by Brown, good play by Brown, and this is part of why Brown maybe wants to go to Kansas City, because Mahomes will hit those throws, and maybe he can, you know, add some more yards and have a better statistical season, which could get, get him the better contract, right? But let's go over here now, because this is another, I think, real important aspect of why Kansas City is going to bring him in, where you see this route, kind of this over-the-middle route, in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and really, I think a lot of times, what you want out of a receiver is like, can you just win one-on-one? -on -one? If it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, we'll give you a route you're good at, can you just get open? And if you can do that, you know, the other stuff is cool, right? Being able to run good, solid setup routes, that's cool. Being able to win down the field, you know, uh, and be able to make those good catches and be able to have speed, all that stuff is very cool. But sometimes, like, you know, this is the first and 10, but like if it's a third and seven, can you just be a guy who can move the sticks? Well, on this play, watch how again he uses that speed to just accelerate enough to get past the corner who's trying to cover him. This isn't a wide open window, right? You don't look at this and say, oh my God, uh, if you miss this, this is a, you know, horrible throw. But let's just be honest. This is a window that we expect Mahomes to hit. I don't know, 99 out of 100 times. Like this is a, this is the, it's, it's a big window. It, it is for the NFL. It's a big window right here. It is complete and really kind of a nice tough catch as well. One of the underrated aspects of his game is he can make those tough catches on top of it. So yeah, I mean, Brown's just an interesting player. He's had an interesting career at this point where he was probably, you know, he drafted by the Ravens and he, he was all right for them, but probably wasn't worth a first round pick. And then for whatever reason, I think the Cardinals maybe kind of wanted to keep him happy or uh, keep Kyler Murray happy or something because they had a connect Brown and Kyler had a connection. But the Cardinals massively overpay by giving a first round pick for a guy who only had a couple years left in his rookie deal, which now looks horrible because he ended up walking not too long after that. So that was a bad job by the Cardinals. But this whole time, like, you know, um, Marquise Brown had played pretty well. Like last year he got banged up. He doesn't really have an injury history. That was just kind of, you know, the thing that happened. But, you know, it was just kind of a weird situation where he kept kind of getting overvalued by certain teams that it almost made him underrated in a way. Sort of like how David Johnson ended up having a pretty decent season with the Houston Texans, but no one cared because they traded away DeAndre Hopkins to get David Johnson, so everyone still made fun of that trade, right? Like, which, as they should have, and as, you know, you should make fun of the Cardinals for trading a first-round pick for Brown. But at the same time, that doesn't make Brown any worse than we already thought he was. He's a good player, and the interesting thing in Kansas City is they're not asking him to be a number one receiver, which will actually be the first time in his career. Because, you know, with the Cardinals, uh, Hopkins was gone. And then, uh, you know, prior with the Ravens, he was the number one receiver. Now he can be the third option on certain plays. And I'm interested in seeing how he does with that. But yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on Brown and what he means to the Chiefs. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.